Hi guys, Squad here. Today we're going to take a look at a early access game. It's called Frontier Pilot Simulator. Now the developer got in touch with me and said, I think you'd like this um, because, and this, and, and I quote, they said, it combines Subnautica, Surviving Mars, Elite Dangerous, and Euro Truck Sim. Now obviously, listening to, or rather reading an email like that and thinking, Okay, that's a bit of a claim. I need to go and have a look at this, especially with the word Eurotruxim on the end. Subnautica, Survivor Mars, Leak Dangerous, and Eurotruxim. So I jumped into the game. I streamed it for a bit. I had a play. Now, the first thing that strikes you, you're probably looking at the screen going, Oh my god, that is the busiest HUD I have ever seen. <laughs> and that was my reaction as well. I was like, oh wow, what is going on here? It turns out that this HUD kind of provides you with some useful information but a lot of it when you're actually flying around is so far from the middle of the screen it's like right towards the edges that it's very hard to see what's going on anyway i i fed a lot of this back to the developer who watched the stream as well and they they have already started work on a new hud and that's one of the things that's worth saying is that the dev team is very engaged with their community they really want people to help steer this thing so what is it what what have i found out about it what do you do um well, first of all, I'll just say ignore the HUD, right? Ignore the HUD. It's going to change massively so that it looks more like a kind of a flight sim kind of HUD with an attitude and a vertical speed and all the rest of it. So what you do in this game is you, you kind of pick up packages or people and you move them around, uh, trade for profit, upgrade your ship with different components, buy different ships. It is early access. It's still fully in development. But uh, let me show you, if you press the map key, let's show you where we are. So we're down here at... It's a bridge point on this this island here. Now, we've only got a little scarab. It's the beginning ship that you start with. And um, you might think, well, is that the whole thing? Well, it's not. If you zoom out currently, there's that. And then there's this very far away thing called Raglor Transit. Now, as you play the game, you get to this point where you can afford a better ship. You get the better ship and then you make your way to Raglor Transit. But I will say this. It's not easy for a couple of reasons. The physics in this game and the weights and balance and stuff make it very tricky to fly. And the navigation, uh, as you're flying through a lot of cloud, there'll be an electrical storm and it will like interfere with your navigation. And finding your way around this map is not always easy. Uh, but if you do make it to Raglar, you'll then be able to go to things like this, uh, floating trawler, um, the research platform that sits on the sea, uh, cargo spaceway, and they all buy and sell different things. Now, as you get down to these places, like the landing, hard mining mine, these are very hard to get into um, because of where they are and the kind of volcanic storms that's going off. So it is kind of a fun game. I think the, this is about it at the moment, the small island and the big island. So it's not an endless game, but it is uh, It is an early access. So let's show you what you do. So it's all, you know, we're at the start of tutorial bit. It says fly here. So you kind of hold down your trigger and it engages your thrusters. And uh, you can see the numbers starting to change on the right. You see the speed changing, your altitude changing. Uh, what you do is you kind of hold the thrust, but if you left-click the stick, it goes into like a thrust hold mode, which is particularly useful. So there you go, we can now hover. And then basically, you know, as you push forward or, or push backward or push left or push right, your little Scarab's engines, it's a bit like a VTOL system, I guess. Uh, you can also use the rudder um, to, to turn as well. Uh, it kind of does a lateral turn. It doesn't work too well on the Scarab, but on the next ship, it does work a lot better. So, let's fly over there, as it says. Let me move the camera back. So, we increase your thrust a bit, and then push it forward. And land. Now, you need to start decelerating and reducing your thrust in good time. As you can see, I'm already too high. That is the landing platform, but if you were to look at the landing platform there, you can see that it's got a, it's got a picture of the ship like a an orientation that you have to land on before you can actually start docking. So let's just see if we can straighten up here and turn it around. Let's move the camera. Like I say, it's not the easiest thing. It's actually quite tricky. Another approach you can do is rather than trying to land um, a certain orientation, you can just land it. I'll show you that first. The wheels come out automatically. You just land it like this. And then you can begin to... Um, if you push the stick, it has like a taxi mode. There you go. So you, uh, you you need to orient the ship to be the same orientation as the platform there. And then we'll be able to buy and sell things. Now, at the moment, it's in tutorial mode. So it's in, oh, buy rations. There you go. So it's great. You've arrived. Uh, as you back up, it should go like a, usually it goes like a green color. 
Um, there you go. It's gone green. So it says press A and buy food rations. Sell better than hotcakes in colonies. So you press A. And on the left, it shows you your cargo. Now, it's got zero one slot. This The Scarab can only carry one item. And and don't be fooled by this. It says zero to 5,000 tons, I think it is. Do not be fooled by this. This is absolute nonsense. If you put more than about, I think it's, what did I carry? About 2,500 tons on this? You can barely lift off. And the reason is, is although that's like a, a theoretical payload for the Scarab, Unless you've upgraded a lot of things like the engine power and stuff, you won't be able to lift off. And it doesn't really guide you as such either. It, it lets you happily buy that and then you can't take off. So apart from that, it's great. Um, hold X to recharge. So this is your fueling sensor. If you hold X down, uh, it charges you and you can see uh, your money comes down and so on. So we've got over here advanced colonial rations. Uh, we're going to take 1,250 kilos and then they're going to cost $850. Uh, so if we... Whoops, if we uh, move over to that. Purchase is not possible. Why is purchase not possible? Let me press A. There we go. So you can see it being loaded in the back. And it takes a little bit of time and then it connects in the back and it says you bought and it even tells you what you bought it for. So my money's gone down because we spent that much money. Uh, it says load complete. It's been secured. Close the shop with B. So we press the B. I'm just using an Xbox controller, by the way. I think you can hook this up to a hotel, so I've not bothered to try it yet. So we do that, and uh, it says on the very, very busy HUD, if you look, top top right says uh, sell rations here, 2.8K. So it shows you kind of a radar position, but it only kind of makes sense when we take off. So let's hold the thrust down. And this is where it gets interesting because... You really can feel the weight in this game. Now that's at maximum thrust, but your maximum performance of the engine only really happens when you also tilt forward. So you've got to watch out for that one. Oh my god, that was close. So you see the thrust bar on the left? It's like, as I hover like that, it's not maxed out, but if I lean forward, it uses some of the thrust to go forward as well. So it takes a bit of getting used to, because um, there was that game where I used to play many years ago. And you had a pod. You had a spaceship and you had a pod underneath you. And when you picked up the pod, you could really feel it swinging your aircraft around. And you had to sort of uh, travel through this horizontal cave system. Uh, get as far as you could uh, on each level. It was very tricky. And it kind of reminds me of that because of the... Um, there we go. I'm full, I'm full throttle now. Look, 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 look. I'm full throttle. And look at it. Oh, it's just struggling so much. It catches you out this game quite a bit with its with its physics. You've got to watch the vertical speed quite a bit because if it, if the vertical speed, uh, if you start to descend too quickly, it's extremely hard to get it back again. Right, there we go. That's a good hover. Maybe a little bit more power coming in. And of course, the information that I need is over on the right there. Um, that sort of 410, 407, you see it coming down. And the vertical speed. There we go. It's the vertical, and they kill the thrust like that. So, I, you know, the new HUD design they've got planned looks fantastic. Uh, it really does put more information right in the center of the screen where you need it. Um, but, you know, it's doable. But it's kind of one of those things that's easy to pick up, but kind of hard to master. There we go. So we press A on that. Now, we bought for, I think it was like 800 or something, and we're selling for 2225. So we'll do that. Or we'll refuel as well. There we go. There you go. Carvago delivered, and we now have 4,800, which is great. So we'll, we'll come out of this thing. Now, it probably wants us to pick up some passengers uh, from somewhere. Item sold, cargo, colonists, colonists will be fed. There you go, pick up a passenger, 95.9. Straight ahead there, you see it? So this is kind of teaching you cargo, and now it's teaching you passenger. So we'll go and get this guy. Now the passengers I found, um, and, and this is a couple of things that I fed back as well. You don't know where the passenger's going, okay? He doesn't tell you before you pick him up where he want, or she wants to go, or how much they're going to pay. So you can't factor your passenger runs in with your cargo runs because the passengers can fit inside as well. So it says open the hatch. So you press down on the D-pad and then your hatch opens. 
and then the passenger runs over and gets inside. And then they tell you where they want to go. And the thing is, they also get very, very naggy as well about it. So let's see what happens. So they get inside. Deliver me to Nord Colony. So it's not even a please. It's just deliver me. <laughs> so if you look at the map, we're here in Central and the Nord Colony is up here. And if we don't go there, if we start flying somewhere else, like let's say we do a bit of cargo. Look, this isn't where I need to be. They start getting really naggy. But, you know, early access and all that. I'm pretty certain that's going to change. Okay, let's turn. Move forward. And we're off. Passengers don't weigh very much at all. Um, so it's not really an issue moving passengers around, and unlike cargo. Uh, they're actually a lot easier to deal with. And you can have more than one at once. However, they do... The pay seems to be based on how quickly you get them over there. And of course, how safely you get them over, over there. Oh god. And the other thing... Wait a sec, wait a sec, wait a sec. The other thing to consider is... If you do crash your aircraft then the cargo will remain where you dropped it. Which, if it's on an island, if it's over land, is not too bad. You can generally go back and pick it up. Generally. Unless it's on a massive slope. If it's over water, no chance. And because you invested your money in the cargo, if you lose that cargo, you basically lose a lot of money. You lose all your pro potential profit and everything you invested in the cargo. So it's not like taking on a delivery saying, I promise to deliver these goods. Uh, and be paid this much money, you basically have to upfront buy the goods a bit like something like Elite Dangerous. So I can understand where they're coming from with the whole Elite trading thing. And I can kind of understand the Euro Truck thing because, you know, you're basically moving goods from A to B. So I get where they're coming from with that. Uh, at the moment, I can't quite see where the surviving Mars element comes in uh, or the Subnautica, particularly the Subnautica. I don't quite understand that one yet. But we'll see. Maybe they've just got big plans. Uh, with the game. So let's try and touch down. Let's kill the thruster. So if we open the hatch. Then they should get inside. Sorry, get outside and then we'll get paid. But they don't kind of say, right, this is what you did. This is how much I'm going to pay you. They just jump out and some money appears in your account. It's a bit strange, this bit. Anyway, so let's show you something else. Uh, the service drones container wants me to pick up some stuff. What I want to do is show you the hangar um, and how that works. Oh, also, while we're here, I'll show you the uh, on the map. If you hover over a place, it will tell you um, available items and necessary items, which is essentially on the left, this is what we buy, and on the right, this is what we sell. So you can see that the kind of things we could bring here are water and protein rations. However... Unlike a, in Elite Dangerous, when you pick up some goods, you can specify how many you want to bring. So you can sort of say, well, each of those weighs 500 kilograms. Uh, I'll take three of them because I know I can carry that much safely. In this game, it doesn't work that way. If you've got some protein rations, and we can't see that from here, they might weigh considerably more than you're even capable of carrying. So let's say... Um, They've got MTG batteries over there There's, that, that cost 200. Let's fly over to the uh, pickup point, and then we'll see. We'll then be able to see how much entry G batteries cost, which we can't see from that screen, which I, I think is a bit of an oversight. There's something else they need to sort out. Oh, hang on, I thought I was in a certain flight mode, and I wasn't. There we go. Okay, so that guy wants to go to bridge point, but I'm not taking him there. Basically, some of the people that we picked up, we picked up more than one person back there. And one of the ones we've got wants to go back to Bridgepoint now. So with this thing, we need to... Actually, no, that's something else, I think. Let's not go there. Let's fly over to the um, thing down here. This is where we want to be. You can see how tricky this thing is. Perhaps not appreciate it until you try it yourself. But see, I've got a lot of vertical speed, so maximum thrust, and I just about stop it from crashing. But if I had cargo, that would have crashed. In most cases, it's generally easier to just land and then taxi over to the part where you want to be, rather than trying to orient yourself around and land. Uh, I know something like Elite Dangerous, when you're docking, you have to sort of dock in a particular orientation. 
Um, not so with this thing. But the controls on Elite Dangerous, like the way your ship moves with its lateral thrusters, just seems to be... It's a lot easier to do that than it is with this game. Okay, so if we press on that now... See, now we can see the weight of this thing. 500. Whereas before, we wasn't allowed to see how heavy that was. Which I think is a massive oversight because... You know, I don't know if we'll be able to carry it. But anyway, from this you can work out... Well, we could pick up um, MTG batteries here for 200. And let's have a look who would buy them. MTG batteries for 1351. So we know we can make that run. Make a profit of 1100 minus whatever our fuel is. And this is what you do initially in the game. You kind of work out these runs that you can make. Uh, they sell GTAP batteries for drones and equipment. I've got a feeling they're too heavy. Um... One of these is definitely too heavy. It might be the bio radar. Now, that brings me to another point. Some of the equipment that you carry has different levels of fragility. And I have taken some three-star rated for fragile items, which are extremely fragile items, without an upgrade to my ship um, that stops things getting damaged due to G-force stress. As I'm flying around, as I sort of descend, you know, or, or turn too sharply, I will damage the goods because I'm flying too erratically without this upgrade. So that's the kind of depth that it goes to. But let me show you what the hangar looks like, because the hangar is where you do your upgrades. Now, one of the things that you can do is set waypoints on the map. And it happens that the spaceport here is where you get the upgrades. There you go. So you can see the Mongoose engines, which are basically upgraded engines, 2,500, the Mule chassis, suspended batteries, that will give you more um, fly time because it improves your fueling capacity. Now, what you can do is you can set waypoints by doing things like this, just multiple clicking, and if you right-click, it removes them. So we'll set a waypoint to the spaceport, and we'll go straight there and dock into the hangar, and I'll show you what the upgrades look like. Now, as we're flying here, I want to show you something, so let me just thrust up a little bit. If we press the Y key, this is where it gets interesting. And this is one of the fundamental things about the game that I didn't want to show you initially because it would kind of overface you, but... What you're looking at is a very complex weather system. And in order to be successful at this game, you will have to learn how to use the weather systems to your advantage. Now, obviously here, there's like a thermal vent. If we fly into that, our ship will, will basically tumble and will almost certainly die. Same with that one over there. But the rest of it, you'll notice, is almost like wind direction and speed. And that's exactly what it is. And on this starter island, the wind is kind of gentle, hence the green bars. They're, they're very kind of light winds that drift around. You can use them to your advantage, but it's not quite as necessary early on. Later on, when you start to fly the heavier ships and the bigger loads, and over much greater distances, you will need to start to use the wind to your advantage. So you want to fly uh, different altitudes, because as you fly higher, um, you will find that it will suddenly be a wind going in the direction that you need it. Oh, that's cool. Look at that ship coming in. That's awesome. So these things come and go as well as, you, as you're flying around. Uh, so you will need to learn how to use the wind in order to um, to get the distance sometimes. Some of the hops are quite long. Uh, anyway, this is the spaceport here, so we just need to fly over there. Sorry, I'm failing miserably. Let me, let me turn that off. It's very distracting. And uh, we'll fly down towards this thing. So that's one of the ships that comes and go, but below it is where the spaceport actually is. So we'll try and do a controlled descent down to here. Hopefully without dying in a fireball. I've got a minus 55 vertical speed on the right there if you see it. Minus 40, so we'll, we'll kill some of that. We'll get it down to minus 30, something not too high. Minus 20, okay, that's fine. And the hangar is just in front of us there. It's a bit more thrust and we'll go forward a bit. Now, they have said, they have talked about a first-person, like, cockpit view, which currently doesn't exist in the game. At the moment, you can only fly it in the third-person mode, which is, it's okay, but it would be nice to get a first-person at some point. Okay, so there we go. So we touch down, kill the thruster, and this is the thing we want to be in. I can't remember if it wants us to orient. No, we're okay. So if we press on that now, what happens is a large machine comes out, takes us inside. If we need to repair, this is where we do it. It's the only place we can repair is at one of these kind of spaceport hangar things. And it's the only place you can upgrade. Now, each spaceport around the map will offer different upgrades and at different prices. 
so you will have to fly around in order to get the parts you want. So one of the first upgrades that you could get is this thing here, the Mongoose engine with extra diffractors. This will give you an extra 30% for 2,500, but it will add some more to your ship. This one here gives you uh, mule class rigidity, so that kind of means that you can take a certain, you know, harder landing uh, without taking any damage to the ship, because when you when your ship gets damaged, uh, let's say you damage your engines a little bit, they will underperform, and it causes the physics of flying to change, and it also means you might not even be able to take off with the payload you've got, because your engines aren't performing at 100%, and that's a serious consideration in this game. And then finally down here, the suspended batteries that will increase the battery capacity by 800. Uh, and you can see the integrity of my components at the moment. You can see I need a little bit of repairs. 13 credits, I could, I could basically hold X like that. And the bots will come in and just repair everything on the ship. Um, but this tells you here what you've got fitted, and this gives you the improvements. Now, as you play the game a little bit more, you'll be able to buy the upgraded ship, which is this one. And this has also got the new upgraded force feed engines. As you can see, that's why they're bright red. You don't start with these. This thing is a beast. I mean, beast, not as in it's an amazingly powerful machine. I mean, beast as in it's like trying to fly an elephant with flappy wings. It's insanely big and underpowered. You really struggle to move goods around initially with this thing. The first thing I had to get was the engines with force fed power because honestly, I couldn't lift anything otherwise. But even now, you know, it's still a bit of a struggle. Now, the one thing this does have is flight mode. And I'll show you flight mode in a minute. It's what lets you fly around the map much, much more quickly. Now, on the right here, you can see the kind of upgrades that I can buy for this thing. This is the engines I had put on here. Uh, we can then put in lightweight extra hold fasteners to give us improved cargo capacity. We can have gyro compensators of the hold compartments. Anti-overload minus 25%. What that basically means is, it's going to put some stuff into the uh, into the hangar that when you've got delicate equipment, like, say, lenses from cameras, which I'll show you in a second, uh, if you was to hard turn, then the G-forces would damage the goods. This will help reduce the, uh, the amount. Um, it will basically give you more buffer before you'll damage the payload. Essentially, well, that's what that is. And then this one down here is the improved suspended batteries, which you can see I've already got as well. So let's pop out of here. And we'll have a look at the map and we'll have a look at what goods we can move out of here. And uh, we'll take a quick flight so you can see what flight mode is like. Love the animations in this thing. Uh, so top left of the screen, it should show you in a second what the version of this thing is. It's Alpha 0.9. So, you know, Alpha, it is not a finished thing at all. There's plenty more to be done on this. I think this is a game that's worth kind of keeping keeping your eye on you know just to see where it goes i don't know what the plans are from the developers but i do like the fact that they're they're really engaged with the community and they want to know what people want from it um which is great i think they probably need to focus on you know things to do and get the hud right and then start moving on to you know expanding the map expanding the goods that you can carry uh i would be interested to know if they have any plans to do a sort of a multiplayer of this thing uh, the ability to sort of play with friends and move goods around collectively or anything like that. I don't know if that's the plan or whether it's just purely offline. Um, remains to be seen. So, if we press the M key, you can see where we are. This is the main island I told you about. So I managed to work my way down here to the hard mining mine, which is a really weird name. <laughs> now on the right though, you can see the kind of things they sell. The high precision lenses, um, I moved some of those and I got zero money for it because I completely damaged them. So I'm not going to go near those things. Uh, the ones that are in green, there are the upgrades that we saw earlier, so it's only the blue items that we need to worry about. There is a, a surface G-Wave scanner. Now, there are some missions that you can do, particularly around here, where it will you can take a mission to say, they'll give you a scanner and they want you to fly to various places on the map and drop the scanners down so they can do some seismic studies. So there are elements of mission-driven stuff coming in as well. But what I think I might do is take the Cerium Purified 11 standard plates which will, which are for 350 we can buy, and we can take them over here and they'll place 6600, which sounds like an insane profit, but the fuel costs alone will sort of help to kill some of that profit. But first I need to check the weight of these things. Uh, 350 is what they're paying. Now that weighs five tons. Now that's a problem because I'm pretty certain I'll never get that off the ground. The reason I went for this, the lens in the first place, was because uh, the weight of it, but if you look, it has three fragile bars on this, 
Five tons, I'm pretty certain I can't move. A two-star rated fragile one. Even that, I think, would be dodgy. The Deep Explorer Surface G-Wave Scanner. Um, I don't even know who would want that, to be honest. I'd have to check on the on the overhead map and try and find somebody that wants an overhead scanner. They may be far away. The further you take things as well, the more you do get paid. Um, but there's a limit to how far you can fly. And what you may have to do is, uh, is plan a... A, a, a landing on the way just to refuel. Now, some of the things like this one don't show you what they're buying and selling you unless you physically go there. This was one of those places. I went to this, and it was it's an absolute horrendous nightmare to land here. It's very, very difficult. Uh, can't find anywhere that wants to buy these things. So what I'll do is I'll just take off. Do they want them? I'll just take off, and um, you can see what flight mode is like. We'll go without any payload. Now, the trick with set with flying this thing, as you can see, how much it doesn't want to move, and that's with the improved engines. Imagine that with a payload. With five tons, it wouldn't even move. The trick with this thing is you've got to manage your forward speed as well. So what we need to do is we need to head forward and start to pick up our forward speed, like that. Now we're picking up to 100 now, and then at the right point, I need to engage flight mode by pressing Y. Sorry, by pressing X, the engines will go forward and we'll lose some altitude and blow up into the ground. <laughs> so I'm not exactly sure what went wrong there, but you can see what happens now. Um, when you die, this is what happens. It will spawn a rescue pod, which you'll be flown back, and then your insurance will pay for another aircraft. However, as I said earlier, if you're carrying cargo, that's a different story. The cargo would have been have left by the uh, the hillside there, and we'd have to go and try and rescue it, and that is not easy. But unfortunately, there's no way to skip this bit. You have to sit and wait for it to happen. It will take you to the nearest spaceport, which just happens to be very close right now, but other times, you may not be so lucky. You may have to wait a little while, uh, because the nearest spaceport is a very long way away, and you have to wait for it to fly you over there. I guess that's a little bit tedious, and they need to sort of allow a way of skipping that. But let's try again. Let's try taking off again. See if I can not actually die. Right. Ignition. Thrust. Now let's get an idea of the winds. You can see some gentle winds here at the moment. Let's turn that way. And uh, we'll start picking up the forward speed. Geological scanner 2 over there. Okay, there we go. Now the clouds in this game are pretty cool. Has to be said. I'm gonna put the um, the wind overlay on so we can see it. Now, I fed back to them the need for an attitude indicator, and the reason is because when you start flying through a lot a lot of this lovely cloud, you really cannot see where you're going. Um, and you without an attitude indicator, it's very easy to become disoriented. Now we need to get away from those um drafts over there. Let's climb fairly high. Now the little orange markers are kind of, I think they're basically cues as to where it's most efficient. Uh, so that's the most efficient point to run the engine, I think, but there's not a lot of information available at the moment. Now you notice how my nav has gone, because um, it said that the, uh, the scanner had broke down. I can't access the map from here either. So without Without any nav aid and without the ability to look at the map, I cannot see where we are or where we're going to. Let's get rid of that. But it is pretty, isn't it? The clouds are fantastic. I mean, if I had clouds like this in flight sim, I'd be pretty chuffed with that. I'm just going to fly over here. And um, one of the things you do when you want to transition from flight mode to sort of VTOL mode is you need to be pretty careful with your, your forward speed. It's very easy to gain way too much speed. And as you come out of flight mode, it will um, basically pull too many G-forces, which doesn't matter because we're not carrying cargo, but will, you know, affect the cargo uh, if you do that too harshly with fragile stuff without the stabilizers. I'm going to head towards this thing and see what this is all about. 
Uh, down the left side though, you can see my fuel is coming down, so I'm, I'm pretty low on fuel. I forgot that when you die, and this is an irritation actually, when you die, you spawn and it takes a massive chunk of fuel for some reason, and if you forget to refuel like I just did, you can find yourself in big trouble. So, 6k's away, there's a lot of cloud here, let's start to back off on the throttle, and then we'll see what we can do. So the airspeed's coming down, we'll just glide in a little bit more, and then we'll transition into a hover mode. Okay, my airspeed's still at 100, just about airborne now, just glide it in. Okay, let's transition. Bring the throttle back up. And if you've done it correctly, you can just about hold a hover. But with cargo, like I say, you might find yourself in a bit of trouble there. So we're going to need to refuel this. So what we need to do is find the landing pad. The landing pad is over on the left. Uh, right near that thermal vent there that's being tapped for energy. Great place for a landing pad. Definitely, you know, nothing unsafe about this whatsoever. <laughs> Try and hover this in. So yeah, this is a lot lot easier right now because I'm not carrying cargo. With cargo, this is really horrible. I don't know how many ships are in the game at the moment. Um, I know there's the Scarab and there's, I know there's this thing, but I don't know if there are any more or if any more are planned. Um... This one, I think, needs some tweaking. I think it's, uh... They need to move cargo off the landing bay as well. I think at the moment, it's not unflyable, but it's very, very difficult to operate. The engines are way underpowered for the size of aircraft that it is. There you go. So then you just load up, and you see how much it costs, like 500 credits just to make a flight. So that comes out of your profit. Um, but yeah, it's basically like a trading game at the moment, moving people and cargo around. Um, having some fun with it because it's not particularly easy. But I don't know how much playability there is, but it's only an alpha game, it's early access. Uh, I think it's one to keep your eye on. If you like what you see, I mean, you know, feel free to sort of go and pick it up and help the developer out, but be, be aware of what you're buying into an early access product with not a massive amount of depth, but a developer who's pretty engaged with the community, I'd say. So if it's the kind of thing you want to help, you know, test and feedback, you know, uh, suggestions and that kind of thing, then it might be for you. But I'll be, I'll be keeping my eye on it. I hope you had a, I hope you enjoyed this kind of first look at it. You probably never heard of it before, so maybe um, it's one to put on your radar. Other than that, take care, guys. Happy flying.